Go by the wall now. <laughs> Welcome back to Airborne Productions. That cool orange flame you just saw is what happens when you build your homemade forge wrong. We're going to show you how to build it the right way. The big orange flame is what happens when your air and gas mixture is off. It's cool, but it does you no good for forging. So let's take it back in time and show you from the beginning how to build this properly. First, we found this old oxygen bottle used for welding. We realized that the inner diameter is perfect for our forge, and if we trim down the length, we could easily fit three burners spaced out properly. My dad set his table up so he could rotate the bottle on casters while cutting it with a cutoff wheel. First, he cut the top of the bottle off, and we will use this piece in another project. Then he trimmed the entire bottle down to 22 inches in length. After drilling some holes, we then put the brass fittings together. Right now, we are mocking it up as the final build will have yellow gas tape on the threads in order to seal the connections, which included couplers, three on-off valves, reducers to fit MIG welding tips in the end, as well as trimmed down end caps to allow for air to flow in. We then lined the burners up with the bottle and welded in these fittings that the burners will thread into. These fittings are where burning propane gas will escape into the bottle. Here's a good look at the burner setup. This should give us a great start on getting some heat directly into our forge. So we've got the beginning of our forge setup. Our three burners running into our two. Next, we're gonna mix up some perlite, some refractory cement. That way we make this thing heat insulating. So we rolled up that tar paper to use on the inside. That way, our insulating material that perlite and cement mixture will sit on the edge. Inside here is where our heat will be. Okay, we got a bit of water on the bucket. Gonna add some cement, get a good paste going. Put in some perlite, she'll be ready to put in there. Just chunks. You want to be really careful adding water in it. That's why we're just putting little bits, little drops in there at a time, because a drop too much and all of a sudden you have soup. And this should be a, a, a pretty good firm consistency like a sandcastle, where it'll stick together in your hand. You don't want it too runny. Your water and, and cement will run right outside of the perlite. It won't form up very well. So if I take some of this, I can bunch it up, and that's solid right there. There's enough perlite to where it's actually going to insulate, and it's lightweight enough, but enough cement to tack it together. Beautiful. And there she is, all packed. So this will set up, get nice and hard, and this will be really good insulating material. So when we have these burners running, we're heating up a blade or whatever's inside, it keeps all that heat trapped in, that way we're not sending heat out into the world. Now that the forge itself is ready to go, we need to make a stand for it. First, we trimmed some rectangular tubing and the bandsaw then mocked it up in place in order to weld them to the underside of the forge. With our little Lincoln 140 MIG running flex core wire, we gave each leg a good tack weld on each corner. After proper mock up and tack welding, we then ran some beads everywhere that the legs met the bottle. The welds don't have to be perfect, and we are using a little flex core buzz box to do the job. The stand worked just as planned, which isn't always the case with our projects. Okay, our first attempt didn't quite work. We got way too much flame, way too much propane, not enough air. And this problem can be caused and fixed in a lot of different ways. The first propane regulator we used ran from 30 to 60 pounds. So we bought one that goes up to 20 pounds, which probably said about 15 pounds for one burner. And that's low enough to 
finally get some air in the mixture. And in general, where our jet spits out propane and meets up with the air, we just weren't getting enough air. So we started with this guy on the top of the nipple with the jet going through. Like I said, not enough airflow. So we moved up to this three quarter inch to inch and a half adapter. That way this opening allows for a lot more air to come in. We welded up a quick little mount for a new burner setup since the old end caps had a threaded piece that held all of the burners. It looks great. This new position of the welding tip with a much larger opening sucks so much more oxygen into the burners which creates a much hotter, cleaner burning flame. The large yellow flame was indicative of a lack of oxygen. We no longer have this problem with the new setup. As you see, the new flame created by the burners is a beautiful blue color, which is spot on. We also experimented with different sized MIG welding tips. In the end, we found out that the 35,000 tips made the best flame. Okay, right now, we have the back burner and the front burner on right now. This center one has a little gas leak. We'll fix that leak and that'll be good. But there she is behind us. Homemade forge burning hot. So we've tried this with smaller connectors. We've tried this with smaller tips. But ultimately, the only thing that we've got to work very well was on the propane bottle, we have a zero to 20 PSI regulator. All of our welding tips are 35 thousandths tips. And the inlet that screws on the nipple is an adapter from three quarter inch to one and a half inches. That way it allows a lot of airflow in. We tried so many different combinations of height, where the jets sit in comparison to the nipples, the inlet size, and this is the only thing that we've got to really burn well. So we turned the back burner off, we got just this first burner on, it's gonna flatten it out a little bit. As you see, the forge with just one burner is plenty hot enough to get steel glowing. We left this little piece of round bar in the forge for just a minute or two, and it was hot enough to play with just for a little bit. Afterwards, my dad tried his first blacksmithing project, which was taking a railroad spike and beating it into a knife shape. If you're looking to get into blacksmithing and you don't wanna break the bank, I would highly suggest looking into building your own forge even if you buy burners instead of making them from scratch like we did. It is so much fun to play with fire and beat and reshape metal. I highly suggest at least giving it a try. Thanks for watching and please consider subscribing to see more blacksmithing and other content on our channel. Thank you.